Okay. So uh, the theorem of today. So let me recall the definition of the heat kernel. Uh, 1 over 4 pi t to the n over 2 e to the minus x squared over 4 t. So the theorem is the following. So let uh, u 0 bar. Maybe we can, since now we have just only one initial condition, let me call it u bar, maybe. In L infinity, uh, the section uh, then. U of Tx phi T x minus y U bar y dy for any T and x in zero plus infinity times Rn. Then one U is infinity of zero plus infinity times Rn. Two U T minus Laplace of U equals zero in three the limit for any zero into our N the limit S T X goes to zero That's zero of u t x is equal to u bar where now t is positive eh? so this is a way hence we can produce a solution to the problem, to the Cauchy problem, to the Cauchy problem, ut minus the plus of u equal to 0, and u equal u bar in the world space. Produce one solution, OK? We know that uh, if the domain is, un is unbounded, then the solution is not necessarily unique. Uh, this produces one solution. Hmm? OK, let us prove this theorem. Proof. So let us consider u t s plus h x minus u t x divided by h. Uh, this incremental quotient is the integral over R n phi uh, t plus h. Uh, y, x minus y, u bar of y dy, 
1 over h minus u of tx minus u of tx okay minus the integral phi t x minus y u bar y dy which is equal to 1 over h integral phi of t plus h x minus y minus phi of t x minus y u bar of y dy okay which is equal to 1 over h phi prime phi t into some uh, intermediate point by the Lagrange theorem bar y dy uh, it is uh, this okay by some for some theta zero one okay now okay So now let me compute the difference of u t plus h x minus u t x divided by h minus the integral over R n phi t t x minus y u bar y dy hmm? okay so I have to take the difference between this and this okay so which is equal to the difference between phi t t plus theta h x minus y minus phi t uh, minus phi t um, t x minus y phi t tx minus y uh, u bar so this is less than or equal say less than or equal than this times u bar y dy hmm? <coughs> now we know that u bar is in l-infinity hmm? so this is bounded by a constant the l-infinity norm of u bar so a constant times times the integral times the integral phi t t plus theta h x minus y minus phi t x minus y 
ky, which is equal to h, the constant u bar, the integral over rn, phi t, t, say, t plus theta prime h for some other, again, the Lagrange theorem for some other theta prime, hmm? which is finite, by the way. This is finite. OK. Therefore, hmm, by, by the property of phi, phi is rapidly decreasing. For any positive time, this is integrable on the whole space. OK. OK, therefore, you see the limit. Therefore, we deduce that the limit as h goes to 0 of this is 0. Huh? Is 0. Because I have this h in front. OK? And therefore, u is differentiable in time uh, with such a derivative. OK? So u is differentiable in time, and the derivative is this. And then you can see it is continuous with respect to x. Hmm? In this way, you, show that you, you do this kind of argument for all derivatives, time, space, and you deduce that u is infinity. Hmm? OK. Now, um, so we, we, we know that u is smooth enough, and therefore now we, we, can, we can now start to, uh, to show that actually u is also a solution to the problem. Well, uh, uh, this is almost immediate because so let, let, let me now erase this. We have seen that ut, so u is infinity in the interior. And ut, with, with this kind of argument, is this. Phi t, t x minus y. Y. And also with the same argument, so you do this kind of uh, incremental quotient for all derivatives in space, and therefore you deduce that also this. Do you agree? Hmm? It is enough to repeat the argument. Instead of taking the incremental quotient in time, you take the various incremental quotient in space. So that, for instance, the partial derivative of u with respect to xi will be the integral of the partial derivative of phi with respect to xi. The second derivative with respect to xi xj of u will be the integral of the second derivative of phi with respect to xi xj integrated, and so on. OK? So in particular, the Laplacian is the integral of this Laplacian. OK? Is it OK? So may I go on? OK. OK, so now, um, but then it is immediate to see that 2 is true. Why? Because ut at the point tx minus the Laplacian of u at the point tx 
is equal to the integral over Rn of phi t at the point Tx minus the Laplace of phi at the point Tx multiplied by u bar y dy by this simply uh, subtracting these two formulas. Hmm? But then but then we know that phi is an exact solution, is a solution of the PD for positive times. You remember? Phi is a solution in the positive half half space. Why the f there is no x minus ah because this is <laughs> Thank you, because it is a mistake. So, thank you. There is always t x minus y. Well, sorry. Thank you. Okay, x minus y, x minus y everywhere. Hence, uh, for any t, for any x, for any y, this parenthesis is identically zero. Hmm? By the properties of it, the heat kernel phi. And therefore, U is a solution of, uh, of, of the PD. <coughs> For any positive time, phi t of tz minus Laplace of phi of tz is equal to 0 for any z. OK? Now you call z equal to x minus y, and you have the search. This is, remember, well, this is, we, 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 we found uh, the exponential, etc., etc., as a solution of this, but just only for positive times. And then we have a singularity at time space equal the origin. Okay. So, so therefore, we have proven also number two. The, the most difficult part, actually, in the proof is to show that the initial condition is attained in this sense, in the pointwise sense, in the sense that uh, this limit is equal to this. So for the moment, we have just only used, on, on u bar for the moment, what we have used is just this. This is the only assumption. We have two assumptions on u bar, remember, because for us, were, uh, was um, bounded and continuous. Okay, for the moment, we have just used to have that the, that integral converges and have, and so on and so on. In the in the in the proof of point one, we have just used that u is bounded. Okay. So up to now, up to now, we have used only this. Now, so fix. Now, so, so, so now the point is to show that actually the solution takes the initial condition hmm? in this pointwise sense. So pointwise. Um, so fix x naught. Let epsilon positive. So we know and let so let epsilon positive and take delta such that u bar of x not such that x not minus y less than delta take such that if y is in Rn, 
and x naught minus y is less than delta, then uh, u bar of x naught minus u bar of y is less than epsilon. Okay, so we just for the so, so we know so u now is continuous, u bar is continuous. So since u bar is continuous. We can take uh, we can take delta. Okay. So now we want to estimate this difference minus u bar of x naught. And so we want to show that if x is delta. <laughs> If, if x is delta close, so it's close in terms of delta to, um, to x naught, and so epsilon is fixed. If for, for the same delta, if x and x naught are close, say, of uh, delta over 2, hmm, for instance, and t is sufficiently small because t is going to 0, and if this is less than epsilon or 2 epsilon or whatever, then you have that search. OK? So let, let us estimate this. So this is the, the integral over Rn of phi t uh, x minus y u bar y uh, minus u bar of x naught. OK? OK, but uh, we know that the integral, if you remember, over Rn of phi of tz, say, of t dz is equal to 1, OK? So what we can do now is to use this and to put an integral here, because we integrate with respect to another variable. So let me use the correct symbols. So um, no, x0 is OK, no, because the symbols are the same, are correct. So. Let me write this simply as the integral over Rn phi of t x minus y uh, times u bar y minus u bar of x naught. OK, and this is okay. the symbol that I have. Do you agree? Because also by translation, I mean not only this, but also for any point, there is this phi t z minus y z is equal one. Not only, not only this, you can also translate. The okay. So now we are in this situation, and therefore okay, this is clearly less than or equal. So this is clearly less than or equal than the integral of Rn phi t x minus y u bar y. OK, so now we are focusing around the point x0, and therefore we split this integral into the ball of radius delta centered at x0 of the same quantity.
plus the complement minus V delta of X naught phi T X minus Y U bar of Y minus U bar of X naught dy. Okay. Just split the integral into the ball and outside the ball. Why I do this? Because I can estimate immediately the first integral in this way. Because this is less than or equal. Hmm? Yes, epsilon. Because now, you see, I, I have the, the difference between y and x naught. And y in this integral is in this ball. The ball is of radius delta. Therefore, there, this is less than epsilon. Hmm? Therefore, this is less than epsilon, the integral over b delta of x naught phi x minus y dy plus the same object here. Hmm? Okay. So now let please, uh, I erase uh, everything up to this. So this difference is less than or equal, therefore, of is less than or equal than this plus this. Okay. Less than or equal than this plus this. And now this, so I continue here. This is epsilon positive, and this is less than the integral over the whole space, which is 1. Hmm? So plus, and I rewrite it, the integral out of the ball phi So now I have the ball. I have x naught here. And I have the ball of radius delta. And I have the point y, which is outside. Hmm? Now, if I take, the idea is the following now. The idea is rather simple. So now I have to so now I have to see that this is small. When I I hope that this is small. Well, you see, here I have the, the difference x minus y. And what I know about phi is that everything is concentrated uh, close to the origin. So when t is very close to 0, and x, my, and x and y are almost the same. Hmm? Okay. So now, assume that take now x in the ball of radius delta half of x naught. Hmm? So x is here now. So I have three points. The center, y, the integration variable, 
ranges out of the ball. This is delta over 2. And then I have the third point, uh, x. And now I am assuming that x minus x naught are delta closed, say delta over 2. Hmm? So now what happens to y minus x? So y minus, uh, y minus x, yes, y minus x, which is this that I want to estimate, exactly, this. This. I want to say that it, is, it, it, can, it is not small. If this is not small, then this is large, not, not small. And therefore, this will be, uh, the, will, make the integral converges to zero, converging to zero. So I want to say that this is not small, this distance. I claim that this distance is larger than one half, for instance, this distance. This is not, not difficult. You see from the picture, this is out of the ball of radius delta. This is inside the ball of radius delta over 2. So this distance is larger than 1 half y minus x naught. This is maybe homework. Hmm. Home. Or maybe, maybe we can try to prove it. Uh, so, y minus x naught is less than or equal than y minus, so this is less than or equal than my, one, y minus x plus x minus x naught huh? by the triangular property, uh, which is less than or equal than y minus x. Now, x minus x naught is delta over 2. Okay. And then delta is also larger than y minus x naught. Huh? So, so y minus x. Hmm? So from here we get y minus x larger than y minus x naught minus delta over 2 uh, minus delta over 2. No, 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 no. Ah, yes, yes. No, no. It's OK, because uh, now uh, y minus x naught is larger than delta, because I am out of the ball. So y minus x naught is larger than delta. And therefore, this is less than or equal than y minus x plus y minus x naught divided by 2. OK, and therefore, this is larger than this minus one half of it. Minus one half. Okay, sorry. Hmm? 
So let me repeat it, the argument. I am estimating the distance from this to this. I use the triangular property, inserting this point here. Now, uh, x minus x naught is by assumption less than delta over 2. So I continue here. But y is outside the ball, so y minus x naught is larger than delta. And therefore, this delta is less than y minus x naught. Then, therefore, this is larger than this minus one half, one half of itself. Okay. So why I'm doing this? Because now. Uh, Take x, so one. So this is, you should remember what is this? Epsilon plus the integral out of the ball, delta x naught, um, 1 over 4 pi t to the n over 2, t to the minus x minus y squared divided by 4t, u bar y minus u bar x naught dy. And in that, in that set, we know that this is larger than this, therefore minus is less than, and therefore this is, say, less than or equal than epsilon plus 1 over 4 pi t to the n over 2, integral out of the ball, and then I have e to the minus, finally, uh, 1 half, 1 half uh, y minus x naught squared over 40 times u bar y minus u bar x naught dy. OK. Now, of course, we cannot estimate, we cannot estimate this difference, but this is less than or equal than to twice the L infinity norm of u bar. One, there is why? One over two. One over two. Sorry, one over two. Ah, because one over there is this one over two here. Yes. Ah, one one over four. Sorry. Thank you. Sorry. You are right. This is four. Thank you. One over four. Okay. Do you do you follow? Okay. Is it is it okay? So now this is one of our exercises that we made uh, that we made uh, um, two lectures ago, maybe. For any, we wrote that for any positive delta, if I integrate out, outside the ball of radius delta centered at the, at the origin, then the integral of the square kernel, of the heat kernel, goes to zero. Now, of course, we it's simply it translational argument. We are not integrated out of the ball of uh, center at the origin, but out of the ball centered at x naught. But here we have y minus x naught. So it's exactly 
the argument of the second exercise of last time. This goes to 0 as this product goes to 0 as t goes to 0. Hmm? by one of our exercises. Hmm? Hence, hence uh, we conclude, because what we have shown is that take a point x0, fix epsilon, take delta as the continuity of, uh, of u bar at x0 corresponding to u bar at x naught. So epsilon is given, delta is given. Now take x minus x naught less than delta over 2. Hmm? Now take t so small such that this is less than epsilon. <coughs> hmm? So take t bar positive such that t less than t bar, t into 0 t into bar implies that that object there, this is less than epsilon for any uh, less than epsilon. Then, the, 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 the proof is concluded because if x is less than x0 of delta over 2 and t bar is sufficiently small, then we have that the difference u tx minus u bar of x0 is less than 2 epsilon. OK? And therefore, the proof is concluded. Hence, uh, the, the spirit of this proof is that close to x0, this is small because u is continuous. Far, far from x0, we cannot control this difference. But far, far from x0, the kernel is not concentrated. I mean, the, the kernel is going to 0 very rapidly. Huh? Because of that, of that, uh, that uh, trick uh, of the points. If I am outside here, y is here, x not x here. Uh, then this must be large. This must be large. Once this is large. Once there is some room here, then the kernel goes to zero. OK? So this concludes the proof. Just, just one remark. Uh, The proof, so I mean, it seems to me that the proof is correct under the following less stringent assumptions on u bar. So remark, proof is OK. So, so assume u bar in L infinity. Take x not a point a point where u bar is continuous then limit then u then the same conclusion same conclusion of the, of the theorem same conclusions. <coughs> so, 
assume you bar, then u is infinity, ut minus Laplace of u equal to 0, just only under these two assumptions. Hmm? Next, take a point where u bar is continuous, then the limit as tx goes to t of u t. So at all continuity points of the initial condition, we have that the, the initial condition is taken by the solution. Hmm? Do you agree or? Because we use only continuity on the third part. Yeah, we use the only the continuity only in the third part. Hmm? <coughs> if our proof is not wrong. <laughs> okay. In particular, uh, for instance, with this remark, one can consider an initial condition which is, for instance, the characteristic function of a bounded set. For instance, u bar equal 1 if x in, is inside bounded set B and 0 else. So it is continuous initial condition just bounded, however, with two values, then where the function is, is continuous, the initial condition is taken. OK? OK. So, uh, so this is allowed. This is an initial condition which is allowed. Um, then we can, so this concludes the, the part on the heat equation, on parabolic equation for the moment. So uh, I hope that we will have time to discuss again the problem of existence uh, once we have studied some functional analysis. Okay, so now we pass to to some other argument. OK, so the, the next argument are, are say something about elliptic equations. Say something about the Laplace equation. So now uh, we. Um, we will want to discuss the following PD minus a plus of u equal to zero in omega open set contained in our N. Hmm? So this is you see now in this in this problem there is no time. So this is just a, a problem we, we, where time, the time variable is not present anymore. So the solution, so definition. If u is C2 in omega and minus Laplacian of u is equal to 0 in omega, then u is called harmonic in omega u is called harmonic in omega. If u is C2 and minus Laplace of u 
is less than or equal to 0 in omega. This is called subharmonic. And of course, if u is minus Laplace of u is larger than or equal than 0, it is called superharmonic. Hmm? These are just names. Now, so in one space dimension, it is immediate to integrate u second equal to 0. Hmm? So, and already from this, I mean, in one space dimension, linear functions are the harmonic functions, one space dimension. And uh, u second larger than zero are subharmonic functions. So u second in one space dimension, u second, u second larger than or equal than zero, subharmonic, what does it mean? Yes, it means convex. Hmm? So already from here, we see that we can expect the, 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 the maximum principle for a subharmonic function. You see, the maximum cannot be attained in the interior for a subharmonic function in one space dimension. But the minimum, yes, but, but the maximum, no, <laughs> as we can see from this profile. Huh? And indeed, maybe I left you as an exercise to show a sort of weak maximum minimum principle for subharmonic and superharmonic function. We will discuss it. So in one space dimension, it is clear what is a, a, a smooth um, harmonic, uh, subharmonic, concave and convex, uh, convex and concave functions. Hmm? Now, in two dimensions, in two space dimensions, do you know how to produce solutions, non-trivial solu non I mean, of course, linear, linear functions are always solutions to this in any space dimension. Hmm? But can you, can, do you know in two space dimensions, for instance, how to produce non-trivial, non-constant, non-linear solution, harmonic functions? You go to analytic function theory. Because any harmonic function is real or imaginary part of both some analytic functions. Yes, if you know the theory of holomorphic functions, huh, you know that the real part and the imaginary part of an holomorphic function uh, is, uh, is harmonic. Do you know this? So it is plenty of harmonic functions. I mean, I don't know, say, uh, so what is this? Say e to the x plus ey is equal to the x cos y of e. In y, so take the real part, for instance, into variable u of x and y, and then you realize that uh, if you take the Laplacian, <coughs> it is equal to e to the x uh, times cos y minus e to the x times cos y. Huh? So, for instance, this is a non-trivial. For instance, this is a non-trivial harmonic function. So, if you want to think of examples of harmonic functions in two space dimensions, maybe it is very good to go to complex analysis. Indeed, the theory of harmonic function is strictly related to the theory of holomorphic functions, one space dimension. Okay, now. Again, we have a new PD, and uh, of course, uh, any harmonic function uh, is a solution of the heat equation once you add uh, a new time variable. So, I mean, if u is harmonic, 
then v of t x equal u of x if you add a fictitious new parameter uh, this solves the heat equation in omega times 0 plus infinity mm -hmm. if u is harmonic because v does not depend on t so vt is equal to 0 minus Laplace of u is equal minus Laplace of v which is equal to 0 and therefore this is the solution of the heat equation in this cylindrical domain for instance okay so this is a way to produce also stationary solutions to the heat equation hmm? stationary in the sense that they do not depend on time hmm? okay So now the point is that uh, let us try to find, so, uh, so look for new solutions, look for radial, for instance, solution, solutions to minus Laplace of u equals zero. Hmm? Meaning that uh, I'm looking for a solution ux of the form, say, v of x. Hmm? Again, this is a way, like, like in, uh, when we discussed the heat equation, we looked for special solution in one space dimension of the form. Uh, it was like uh, v of x over square root of t, maybe. Uh, this was our claim and this claim reduced the, the PD to an OD well now again we expect that this, this if there are if there are radial solutions then we have to solve an OD uh, and so so let us compute uh, the Laplacian in these radial coordinates. Okay? So the derivative of u with respect to xi it is v, v prime of x times the derivative everybody knows I think what is the derivative of this. Do you know what is this? over the norm of x. Hmm? I hope that this is clear for everybody. If it is not clear, it is immediate because this is by definition. Eh? OK, now I, I now assume, of course, that I'm outside the origin. So now look for radial solution at least for x different from the origin so that everything is smooth enough hmm? uh, and so you see from this you immediately compute this so now the second derivative of u with respect to xi and xj is therefore the derivative with respect to xj of this mm. and this is equal to what? v second norm of x times this Huh? plus v prime modulus of x then I have I think there is so plus e dij 
times this. And then there is another term here, plus b prime of x, xi. And then I have to differentiate 1 over x, which gives you a minus, I think, xi over x cubed xj. So x to the minus 2, x, yes. Is it correct? Yes, this is the same symbol. This is the this is the identity. It is equal one only if i is equal to j is zero else. Just a symbol. Delta i j. Okay. Symbols. So now we take the Laplacian. Hmm? Now okay, we take the Laplacian. So please check the, the computations. So this is x over modulus of x. This is, OK. So let us take now the Laplacian. It means that we are. Uh, this we have to take the sum over the, we have to take the trace of the Hessian. So the sum for i equal to j. So summing the i equal to j, what is this? Huh? Is x squared, which divides with this. Therefore, I surely have this. Huh? Then I have v prime uh, v prime, and then I have okay one over x, maybe I keep it, and then which is the trace of this matrix n because we are in n dimension hmm? and then what happens to this? To this part again, this is an x square which divides this cube, and so it remains one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is it okay? So we have to solve <coughs> now an OD. So call for simplicity this equal to rho. So we have to solve v second of rho plus n minus 1 over rho v prime of rho equal to 0. Hmm? Okay, maybe maybe this is known to you, which is the Laplacian in polar coordinates, coordinates in the rock coordinates. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So now, well, we can, if you want. V prime called this F. So we have F prime of rho plus n minus 1 over rho F equal to 0. Hmm? F of rho. <clears throat> so assume that F is never vanishes. So uh, if it never vanishes, we can divide. This is equal to minus n. 1 minus n over rho. So this is log. OK, assume that f is positive. Uh, OK, log f 
prime is equal to 1 minus n log rho prime. And then we have um, that log of f, log of f is equal to 1 minus n log of rho plus a constant, which gives f of rho equal um, rho, another constant, rho to the 1 minus n. Hmm? f of rho equal to so this is this i think it was f of rho equal to 1 minus n some constant and f was v prime hmm? okay F was B prime, therefore V of rho. Now it let us distinguish the case um, n equal to 2 with the case n bigger than or equal to 3. Okay. <clears throat> this is a constant, uh, let me call alpha, divided by rho to the <clears throat> n minus 2. Hmm? Plus a constant, gamma log rho plus delta. Hmm? In two dimensions, if you differentiate, this comes to be, this is 1 over rho. So 1 in n equal 2 is 1 over rho. Otherwise, it's this. So, so now we, we fix the constants. <coughs> so uh, then we give a definition. So definition, the fundamental solution of the Laplacian of the Laplacian I think it is called uh, fundamental yes for the Laplacian is defined as uh, symbol let me use the same symbol so we don't confuse it with the heat kernel now. We are in a different setting, OK? By using the same symbol, but then I have uh, some constant, 1 over 2 pi, the log of uh, 1 over x. And then I have some other constant. Uh, 1 over x to the n minus 2. Now I will explain what is this. <coughs> we will understand the role of the constants. So we have fixed special constants. So this is why, uh, well, this is this in two dimension. So this is harmonic. This is an example of harmonic function out of the origin in, in the plane. Huh? And this is an example of a harmonic function out of the origin in, uh, in space. 
What are the constants now? Uh, omega n is the volume, the Lebesgue measure, the Lebesgue measure of the ball of radius 1 centered at the origin. This is the, the Lebesgue measure. Hmm? By definition, small omega n, omega n. Volume. volume, the back measure. Definition. So we have n, omega n. So uh, in, by scaling, omega n rho n is the volume of B rho zero. Huh? Okay. And then I think also that. Uh, if I am not wrong, n omega n is the area of the boundary so um, Okay. Well, maybe we should check this. Uh, well, but for instance, take n equal to two. So take n equal to two just to to check something. So omega two is the area of the unit disk, which is pi. Huh? And the and the length of the boundary of the unit disk is 2 pi, 2 pi. Uh, uh, in three dimensions, let's check. The volume of the, uh, the ball of radius 1 is what? Is 4, 3 pi, right? And the area of the surface, the surface area of the ball, of the solid ball, it is uh, 4 pi, which is 3 times 4, 3 pi. So this is probably is correct. Hmm? Anyway, it is an exercise, huh? an exercise. Maybe home. Okay. Okay. So so we have the so the notice the the big difference between two and three and four dimensions. Okay. In particular, the physical situation is n equal to three, where we have one over x. So then maybe the Newtonian, uh, the Newtonian case. Yeah. Uh, so remarks. Let, let us see whether or not phi is okay. Phi is smooth out of the origin, where at the origin there is a singularity. This is clear. So this is a singular. I mean, it's it's a smooth solution out of the origin. At the origin there is a singularity. Like this, for instance, in this case. Now, how strong is this singularity? So is it true or not that phi is in L1 lock, for instance? I mean, can this object be integrated 
around the origin or not? Exercise. Is it possible or not to integrate it around the origin? Well, we compute. So let's see. In n equal to 2, the integral over a ball centered at 0 of the log of rho huh? then this is say dx this is equal to the integral from 0 to rho of rho log rho to pi whatever huh? the behavior up to a constant I mean 2 pi and so on in two dimensions huh? So there is this factor coming from the Jacobian of the change of coordinates in polar coordinates, which makes this integrable. Huh? OK? So this is integral in two space dimensions. Let us see in n equal to, in any dimension, 1 over rho to the n minus 2. 1 over rho to the n minus 2. Then I have to take the Jacobian, which goes like rho to the n minus 1. And therefore, this is surely actually is rho. And hence, it's, it's, uh, it's very, it's, it's integrable. OK. So uh, maybe. Uh, I leave you as homework to show so home. shows that uh, the gradient of phi, there exists a constant such that we have this. OK. And uh, out of the origin, eh? there exists a constant such that this is the Hessian c over x n minus 2, n, sorry, it, it, is, it is worse and worse, worse and worse. And um, so the question is then, uh, so this is the first exercise, so just uh, an immediate exercise. And then is uh, Is this well, no? Okay, That's, this is enough. Okay, now before going on, so as you can see, the estimates are worse when we increase the degree of derivative huh? close to the origin. Okay. Now, uh, be before going on, I think that I need some uh, something about Green's identity. So Green identity. So the first Green identity. So assuming that everything is smooth, we are we, uh, integration by parts can be done. Assuming smoothness enough on omega, bounded, and so on, and so on. So we have already seen that, that we have this uh, fundamental theorem, which I don't remember the notation now. I have used, but something like this. Are these the notation? I mean, so this is the outward. Exterior, exterior, 
unit normal to the boundary. If you, of course, want to use the interior normal, you change sign. Okay. Now, this gives us the following formula. In particular, the Laplacian of u, if everything can be done, is just the u over the knee integrated over the boundary. This follows from this. This follows from this, just simply taking eta equal the gradient of u. Uh, not only this, but also uh, we can do this uh, if um, so. In part, we, we have also this. Uh, uh, assume that now I, you apply this with the choice uh, v grad u, v grad u. And so you find this is equal to v Laplace of u plus scalar product grad v grad u. I don't remember if I've used the dot or the to, to indicate the scalar product. The dot? So maybe let us keep the dot, sorry. Dot. OK, uh, then dot grad u. Huh? So the expanding this divergence. This is grad of this dot grad of this plus v Laplace of u, which is that one. And by, by this theorem, we, this is also must be also equal to, to the boundary of omega. And then we have, this is the new eta. Therefore, scalar product v uh, grad u dot nu omega. So we have this equality here. Maybe this is called the first green identity. First green identity. OK? So let us write, write the first green identity here. V Laplace of u. Sorry, I don't put the dx just for making the formula shorter, minus grad v grad u plus v grad u dot nu. OK? This is the first green identity. Very important to observe, it is obvious, that this is an integral on the boundary, and these are solid integrals surface integral and solid integrals. Okay. Now if I exchange v with u, I also now exchanging the symbols, I have uh, v, uh, sorry, u, u grad v times new. And therefore, we, we, we now deduce the second Green's identity. So this is the first one. Now this is the first Green identity. And then the second Green identity is obtained usually by taking the difference. So second Green identity says the following. This minus this, say u Laplace of v minus this minus this, v Laplace of u must be equal. So now you see this cancels because they are symmetric with respect to u and v. When I take the difference, this cancels with this. Huh? And then I have what remains is this minus this u dv over the nu minus minus v du over the nu. OK, 
Okay? So this is called the second Green's identity. Okay, so this is uh, the, the end of the lecture, and uh, the next week I will be here, I think only on Friday, uh, and we will continue, from fr uh, in, on Friday we will continue the theory of elliptic equations, Laplace uh, equation and Poisson, uh, Poisson equation, okay?